Hello everybody, NC for Excel, North Carolina for Extreme Lovers. Just wanted to share a few things for you folks that are thinking about how do I get to do my first activation. I really don't know how to prepare for it. I got my radio, I got my antenna, I practiced, but I'm still a little nervous. <laughs> Welcome to the club. I got... Uh, well over 500 and I still get nervous so let me just see if I can help you out to uh, take some suggestions that may or may not work but you know if you try it and it helps get you a little bit better comfortable wise um, you won't feel so intimidated very simple I've got a little cheat sheet and I'm going to try to look down so I don't miss my order. But this is to help you, the hunter, who is planning on trying to do an activation, but you still have some reservations. You don't have to. There's no perfect activation. There's no perfect way of doing it. Just go for it is the term that I'll share with you. So... You've practiced at home, you set your antenna up, whether it's a Wolf River coil, a, a Chameleon TDL, an end fed by many folks. I use the KO4 Fox Sierra Zulus, the Buddy Pulse system, the Eagle Wind antenna. Whatever antenna that you're going to use at the park that you're going to try to activate from, practice with it if you can at home or at a local public park where you can have some comfortable feelings about setting it up and not worrying about getting on the air and and uh, getting frustrated or under pressure you're not. If you take it out and practice setting it up and taking it down, you'll feel a little bit more at ease. You'll know what your equipment does, how to hook it up, uh, those kind of things. You won't be under any pressure. That's the whole thing. You're not under pressure with what we're going to share you. Now, once you have your system set up, you brought your battery, you've got it hooked up, you've got your antenna hooked up, you got your beverage to uh, drink on if you like, I really want you to stop here a moment and listen to the following before you go any farther. When you go out, take you a log sheet, notebook, paper, and pencil type thing. Because what we're going to do is not activate a park, but we're going to activate a park. But I don't want you trying to do it on a laptop or device. And it's only because of this. That's another device or item to fail in the middle of you starting to learn. So at first... Just practice this way, and once you feel comfortable of handling working people, then you may want to add your laptop or device if you so choose me. I still run, whether it's 100 contacts or 500 contacts, I still run paper logging because that for me works best for me. Every one of us are different. So that's what I want you to consider taking with you and starting out. Now... Let's see, let me look at my notes, make sure I'm following my order. When you get to the park, whatever park that you're in, that is a poda park, not your local community park, but a regular poda park that has an identifier, US-1234 or whatever. Once you get to that park, Okay, so you know where you're at. Write it down on paper so you have the number so you don't forget it because you will. <laughs> you will. That's why I print them out all the time. When you're there, get on the POTA spotting page. That's going to be your first objective and hopefully the part that you're at will be able to provide you the internet to get you the POTA spotting page. 
set it up in the drop down box by frequency set it by frequency and the reason that you want to set it by frequency is uh, let's say it'll start out on 40 meters the next band it'll go to will be 20 meters the next band will be 17 meters the next band is 15 meters and 12 meters and 10 meters but you'll be able to scroll from the top down and every park that you see spotted there by the band your primary function if you so choose to try it is to make contact listen 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 again how the activator you're trying to contact is operating their activation if you can hear them some of us take lists some of us take one at a time some of us you can tell are using a device and are new. Some of us are seasoned old people and we run like, whoa, whoa, what did I just do? So once you've found the spotting page and you start going down the list, make sure that you write down the call sign you're working, write down the frequency you're on, Write down their park number you're going to be trying to work. So, if you're going to uh, do this, you're not in a race. And let me repeat that. There's no race about parks on the air. You'll get faster as you go along. But for you just to go out and practice a little bit of an activation while not activating, this will help you along. So, write down the frequency that they're on. The call sign, of course, who you're going to be attempting to work. The park number that they're in. If they're in two parks, make two lines like two contacts. Don't try to write all three parks on one contact because you'll screw it up. Make, if I'm in a twofer, make my call sign twice. NC4XL at uh, US1234 and US1235. Okay, so you have two contacts. Remember, the number that you're looking to work is 10. I always suggest 12 for busted calls. But you want at least 12 lines. That's the reason if they're at a threefer, that's three contacts, period. Okay? So that's what you want to do. Work them. You give them the signal report, they're 59 in park number US-10015. And make sure you have their park number. If you have questions on their park number, do not hesitate to ask. When you write down their signal report, 5955 whatever, is only a reference. Okay? When you upload the logs, you're not uploading the signal report. So don't let that stress you out. Write it down for your records. I always try to write the state down, they say, because I take my paper log and manually upload it to my own log in 3FJP. And I use writing down their state as a verification of the call sign that I didn't fat finger it. Or I'll write down the name if he gives me Chris and it's Christopher when I type in his name. It's just another means for me to verify I got the right call. Okay. That is the easiest way to do it. Work the band, work the spotting page and go down and keep trying to work all the parks you hear. If you see somebody spotted and you work them, re-spot them. Re-spot them. That should highlight the call box for them in gray so you will know that you have already worked them. Okay.
And if they change parks, you want to make sure you stick up with that. Most of the time, people that get started will work 10 or 15 contacts to get that under their belt. That's exactly what you have to do. You want to do 20, 30, 40, 50, knock yourself out. Whenever you are ready, not when somebody tells you you are ready, but whenever you are ready, then you can go to the spotting page and spot yourself on a frequency and get ready for the pileup. A couple hints, if you don't want big pileups, turn your power down, five watts, 10 watts, okay? If you don't mind the pileups, go ahead and go QRO. I run 80 watts. Now, as an activator, once you've got some experience behind you in making contacts park to park, use that terminology. Do not hesitate using that terminology. I can't speak for other activators, but if I hear park to park, they go to the front of the line, period. Because I know what it takes to go out and prepare and drive and get the equipment I need to do an activation someplace I've not ever been before, have no control over propagation, bugs, or temperature. I just get to participate. So practice is the easiest way to do it. Now, for those of you that paid attention to what I said and you use paper and pencil to log it, then you go home and log it in N3FJP or Hammers or whatever logging program you want to use. Okay, but make, if you work a park to park, that's where they're in two parks or three parks, make those individual contacts. Don't try to put a comma in there and then put another park number in there. As simple as that, don't do it that way until you get used to it. This should help you uh, do this two, three, four, five times, whatever is comfortable for you to prepare to go out and do an actual activation where you spot and you get ready for some of the pileup. You don't want a big pileup, turn your power down, go QRP. If you don't mind learning the pileup, go QRO. When you're activating, you're in control. If you want to chat with the uh, hunters, Chat with them. It's your activation. I chat, but I also run fast and hard, and I'll slow myself down. How will I do it? I will take a moment to chat with somebody to catch my breath, because I'm doing it on paper. Get to the bottom of a page. Take a drink of coffee. I'll maintain the control of that activation while I'm out there. And if you have some unruly people, and you're going to have them, I don't care what part of the amateur radio you're in, there's going to be some people who think that they need to be at the front of the line all the time. Handle them the way you feel comfortable. Let me look at my notes. Oh, remember, the minimum that you want to get for a activation is 10 contacts. Okay? Let's say you go out and you're practicing this method that I'm sharing with you. You only get eight, eight contacts. It's not a failed activation, so put that in your head right now. It's a learning experience. You don't call a control propagation. And those eight people that you worked are dependent upon you as an activator because you called out park to park, okay? They're dependent upon you to upload your logs. Now I'm gonna reach out to you if any of you are having issues with getting your log done. If you have a local club that has members that are Parks on the Air affiliates, reach out and ask for some guidance. Uh, my number is uh, publicly known. Uh, I'm on Messenger. I am not a professional. I'm an old man that all I do is play on the radio. Uh, I've been doing this for a few years, and I enjoy it because it's fun. 
And if you want to reach out, I'll do what I can or direct you. But don't hesitate to ask another activator, uh, whether in your club or a local club around you, for some assistance, because that's how we help each other. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Thank you for taking the time to make a decision to get ready to go out and activate a park and see what it's like and experience the rush uh, that you will get. It's not a, I don't think I'm going to like this, and I have not ever heard that from anybody going out activating. I've had people with me that when we run, they said, my God, I can't keep up. Well, I do run a little different. All of us are different. You be different, you be you, and you have fun, and you're activating the parks and get out and see the beauty God has given us on all the different areas. And that's pretty much it. NC4 Excel, North Carolina, for Extreme Lovers and Not, I welcome you to the other side of Parks on the Air from the Hunter to the Activator 73s.